All right, so let's have a look at how to uh, kick things up a notch and apply physics to the entire character instead. So here's the, the final result that we're going to achieve. And I'm just going to delete all the layers. And I've already deleted the physics, so there's actually no ragdoll going on here. So this is the scene that we were just working with. And uh, unlike before, I'm going to be applying physics onto the joints of the character. Uh, and then we're going to retarget the physics back onto our IK controls. So I'm going to start from the hip and work my way out uh, and then assign and connect. So instead of assign this time, I'm going to use the assign and connect option. Uh, and like assign, it will make a marker uh, and then it will uh, connect them together. Uh, the order in which it connects is also the order that you select. So it'll be important to select things in the order that you want them to actually be connected. So for the arm, I'm going to select the torso followed by the arm. So now the arm will actually be connected to the torso. Likewise for the other arm and the legs and the other leg as well. There we go. So now we have a, a character that's uh, driven by physics. And at this point, uh, it's getting a little messy. So I would normally hide the joints and then I would take the solver and maybe just offset it slightly to the side like that. So now we can see like the before and after simulation. Per default, he's going to try and match the animation quite closely. So just to demonstrate the effect that we have at the moment, I'm just going to lower the rotate stiffness quite a bit. So now he's a, a very relaxed guy. <laughs> and uh, I'd say that our goal is to just get some overlapping motion onto this, uh, this action, this, uh, this bullet that's hitting him in the shoulder. Uh, the next thing that's missing is the gun. So like before, I'm going to select the gun control. I'm going to assign to that. And uh, also like before, I'm going to replace the mesh of the gun, something like that. And obviously, the, I, did, I didn't run the uh, assign and connect in this, uh, in this case, because what I want to do is to connect the gun to both hands. And so, since it's a, a lone object, uh, now I can use the uh, constraints. So I'm going to select the uh, hand joint, in this case, the hand joint that we assigned to followed by the gun control. So I'm gonna go right all constraint weld. And this just welds these parts together. So now he's, uh, now he's unable to let go of that gun. In this case, I also noticed that there's, uh, there's some self intersection between the uh, upper part of the arm or the, the lower arm rather, and the gun. And because we've asked the gun to be permanently welded to the hand, but we also want physics to push uh, the collisions out, so it's sort of a it's sort of a conflicting requirement. Uh, we can either remove the weld or we can remove contacts on the arm. So I'm just going to take the lower arm. And I'm going to just remove contacts, uh, the collisions on the arm. So now we have an, a gun that's attached to the hand, and uh, as you see, it's quite it's quite heavy because our character is quite relaxed at the moment. Uh, I'm going to repeat the process on the other hand. Select both of them, go constrain weld. Uh, so now the gun is attached to the character. You also notice that the uh, <clears throat> the legs are, are not actually doing what the animation is doing. It's kind of doing it. It's trying to, <laughs> but it's uh, it's almost like it's hanging off the hip uh, because per default the first control that you select uh, is going to be uh, animated. It's going to be left in an animated state. So this, you see that the the pelvis is actually doing exactly what the animation is doing. It's not affected by gravity. Uh, or even contacts or forces or anything like that. Um, in this case, uh, we might not need that, so I'm going to set the behavior uh, of the pelvis to be whatever the group is. So now the behavior of the pelvis is whatever the group is, and the group is set to simulated. And you can change the group setting to affect uh, settings across the whole character, uh, like the whole character can be animated, in which case you don't really get any effect, uh, or it can be simulated, in which case you get like a full ragdoll effect. <laughs> so this is probably too uh, relaxed at the moment, so I probably want to crank that up a bit. And I would also like to uh, to maintain the animation on the feet, because as soon as he, you see, he uh, sort of steps back as he gets hit in the shoulder. Uh, so let's see if we can make the feet animated only. Uh, so now the feet are in a animated state, and <laughs> well, the character is still a bit too... Uh, too relaxed uh, to uh, be able to maintain his pose. So I'm going to just restore this to a value of one, something like that. And that's not uh, that's not too bad. Uh, at this point, maybe I would like to, um, let's see. Well, maybe I want to uh, 
because you see when the bullet hits the, the shoulder, our, our character isn't really, like he's, our physics character is not affected by the bullet, he's only really affected by the pose change that the character is making. You see when he, when he gets hit, he sort of leans backwards, and that leaning is a thing that actually trans uh, translates into physics. But what I want is I want the bullet to be sort of a, a force that uh, hits the character in the shoulder. Uh, so for that, I'm going to apply a new force, so uh, sort of an external force. And it's called, in this case, it's called a field. Uh, so these are the different sort of external forces you can apply to your simulation. And common ones include like air and turbulence. It's quite useful too. Uh, in this case, I'm going to apply a radial field onto the character. Uh, and this gives you this sort of a uh, little little transform that you can move around. And you see these this, these lines appear off the character. Uh, and the lines of, the, the lines represent where this force is going to be uh, pushing the uh, the character. So each individual marker is going to get their own force applied to it. And you see it's also sort of offset to the side. So if I if I remove the offset from the solver, you can see the the proper relationship between the field and the marker. Uh, in this case, uh, the field applies to the whole character, and I really just want to apply it to the shoulder. But let me first show you what it looks like. So if I hit play now. You see that he he sort of he sort of leans back because this force is sort of pushing him in the in this in the the line direction. And if I were to crank this up to say ten, like ten times stronger, I was going to lean up by a lot, <laughs> probably way too much. <laughs> so let's uh, maybe a value of two. All right, so that, that's more like what we want, but we don't want it to be applied uh, continuously. Like we don't we don't want it to be applied all the time. I really only want it to be applied when the bullet appears to hit him. So let's say at this frame, I don't want any magnitude. And then at this frame, I want to have a strong magnitude. Let's say, uh, let's say, let's say 10. Uh, so now it's going gonna, it's gonna to do nothing until the bullet hits. Bam! And then you get like a blast, like a blast impact. Uh, but I also don't want to affect the entire character. I only really want to affect the shoulder area. So again, I'm going to apply a different setting here called Volume Shape. In this case, I'm going to use the shape of a sphere. And now I can scale this up and I can move it into place. So if I just activate the field, you can see you can see sort of the effect that I'm having. I can choose to only affect markers within the sphere. In this case, I want the sphere to only affect the shoulder area. So something like something around there, perhaps. Uh, and that's, look, that's looking pretty good. So now the bullet is going to be hitting the character and it's only going to affect uh, it's only going to affect him when uh, the bullet is, is in the right place and only in the right place as well. Or, you know, only on the right place of the character. Uh, but still, the, the force is quite mild. I would say that we probably need something stronger. So let's say it's at 30, something really strong. Uh, and that's, that, that basically that pushes the character outside of this sphere. And that's closer to what we want. But I also want the character to, to fall over. So let's say that the bullet actually knocks our characters over, uh, knocks our character over. So for that, I'm going to take these feet and I'm going to animate their state, so their behavior from animated to uh, simulated. So let's say at this frame he's still standing firm, but on the next frame I want him to do whatever the group is doing, which in this case is simulated. So now we should see that, uh, okay, <laughs> there we go. So now he's being hit. But he's being hit sort of from the front and he's falling to the side. So I think I need better rejiggle my the force so it's more sort of in the front of the character. Something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit to the side. Okay, that's not bad. So now we have a bullet that's hitting him in the shoulder and pushing him backwards. It's looking pretty good, but he's still very, uh, very stiff. Like he's like a wood, like a cardboard character. So maybe also when uh, when he gets hit, I want him to, to relax, to just like loosen up his muscles so we get some nice sort of follow through and some nice overlapping motion on the uh, the body versus the, the legs. So let's say that from this frame, it's going to be a strong value of 1. But on the next one, I want it to be a value of, say, you know, a much lower value, sort of 0.1. There we go. So now we get some, some proper, like he's really bending over as he's being hit. And uh, okay, that's a... That's looking, that's looking pretty decent. All right, so it gets hit and immediately falls to the ground. Uh, maybe I would like to actually move this to the side so we can see what's going on. Okay, there we go. Um, let's see, from here we can see that the our character is like the simulated version of this guy. It's much 
thinner than our actual actual character. And uh, let's see if I can demonstrate exactly why this can be important. If we start by trying to record this, uh, because there's two more things we need to do to properly record this back onto our character. Because remember with the with the gun, uh, when I assigned the gun, I could then just hit record and it would record back onto the gun. But in this case, we've assigned onto the joints uh, and we don't really want to record onto these joints because the joints are driven by IK. Right? So when I move this gun, we indirectly rotate the joints. Uh, and so I don't want keyframes to be put on these joints. Uh, instead, I want keyframes to be put on the pole vector and the, uh, the IK handles of the foot. You know, and uh, like this, you know, the spine should be controlled by this controller rather than the actual joints. You see, the joint here is completely driven by a constraint. Uh, so, just to demonstrate what happens if you if you don't fix this, if you don't resolve this, uh, I'm just going to go ragdoll record. We can see what it looks like. And if I now hide the solver, uh, we can see that the the, you know, the character is completely demolished by our record operation. Because we've we've tried to keyframe IK, you know, joints driven by IK, and that's not really uh, something Maya is uh, is kosher with. I think even the controllers are now like we've broken all notion of IKFK on this rig. Uh, the gun is doing its thing, but it's not really moving the hands anymore. So uh, I'm gonna undo that because that's not what we want. And instead, we're gonna retarget our simulation back onto our animation controls. To do that, I'm going to select uh, the foot, for example, the, the one that we've assigned to. I'm going to shift select the control. I'm going to go right all, edit, retarget. So now I can see in the in the channel box of the control of the IK, IK, IK control, we can see the same marker that the uh, the joint has. Because now we've retargeted this joint onto this control. I'm going to repeat that onto the other foot. For the thigh, or rather the the knee, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna retarget that onto the pole vector. Likewise for the other pole vector. Uh, for the legs, like these don't really need to be animated at all because they are driven entirely by the pole vector and the IK uh, control. So I'm gonna select both of these and I'm gonna go edit untarget, which means that they just won't get any animation whatsoever. I'm gonna do the same thing for the upper arms. They also don't need any animation and the hands also don't need any, any animation because they are driven entirely by the, the gun. And let's carry on. We want the hip control to be retargeted onto the hip nerves control. So edit retarget. Likewise for the torso goes here and the head goes to this control right there. There we go. And uh, that should do it. So now when we record, uh, we can try this, record simulation. We should find that now our character is actually being recorded back onto our IK controls as opposed to our, uh, well, it looks like we forgot the pole vectors for the arm. Uh, so let me um, delete this layer that we just did. Uh, and let's take the elbow pole vector, edit and retarget. You as well, retarget. Uh, and if you ever get confused, uh, like I just did, uh, there's a way to visualize which marker goes onto which control. And uh, that's can, that can be done via the Rattle, Edit, and Retarget option box. So inside of here, you have this little, little, little editor tab, you know, hidden away, uh, where you can look at what markers are being um, recorded onto where. So for example, the, the gun is coming from this marker. The hip control, you know, the, the hip marker is being recorded onto the hip control. And uh, the thigh is going nowhere. Likewise for the other thigh and upper arm going nowhere, the hands are going nowhere. And uh, this uh, little UI on the side can, uh, can give you some idea of uh, whether it will work or not. In this case, it's saying that uh, this channel, like the channels on the big gun, uh, is actually connected to something. And that's because we've already recorded it, so it's is connected to the animation layer. If I delete the animation layer, we should find that uh, these warnings go away. And now it just shows you that the big gun actually has keyframes on it, and that's typically fine. Uh, if it was um, constrained, it would show you that as well. And um, you can also retarget from here. So if you select, let's say, let's say the big gun is is untargeted, so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so you can select the big gun from here, shift select your 
control and I can retarget it and it will show you the the big gun marker is going to the big gun control. And there we go, so that should be enough. Uh, if I now record this, and I can hide the solver, actually, it's already hidden. There we go, so now we've recorded our character back onto our controls. Uh, there are a few issues that I'm spotting right away, one of them being that the, uh, uh, the elbow and things are sort of going through the body. That's not really what we want. And it's also going through, you can see how the gun is sort of going through the top part of the body. And uh, if we look at our simulation, we can figure out why that is happening. Here we can see that the, the gun is actually not, it's not going through our, our objects, our physics objects. Uh, but our, but our, these capsules, they don't, really, they don't really represent our character that well. If I move the solver back, you can see how the, the torso shape uh, doesn't actually fit with our character. So we can either use the uh, manipulator to tune these shapes. So if I go in here, I can, uh, I can tune this, uh, something like this. I can make the head a bit more representative of the, of the real head. Maybe the arms are a bit thicker, the legs are definitely a bit thicker. And maybe the feet are boxes instead. And so on and so forth. So that's something you can do. And the hip is much too thin. There we go. Uh, so now when the character falls over, it's gonna be more representative of the, uh, the geometry that your character has, which means that the contacts are gonna be more accurate as well. And uh, the other thing you can do is you can continue doing what we did for the gun. So for example, the feet, uh, you might want the feet to use the actual geometry of your character. So uh, replace mesh, likewise for the other foot. And I'm just gonna run through and do this for uh, pretty much pretty much all the, uh, the meshes. So the hip and the torso, the head, something like this. Uh, the lower arm as well and the hand, <clears throat> there we go. So now we have a complete uh, red doll with the, the actual collision shapes. So now we know that when the character actually hits the ground, it's gonna come into contact at exactly where your actual character is. So you, can, you can confirm that to yourself by just aligning the camera real close and just having a look at, does anything actually go through? And it really shouldn't. Uh, we also changed the, well, since, since we changed the proportion of the character, we also changed the, the weight of different limbs. So now the gun is just uh, heavier than the arms because the arms shrunk. So now, now we're getting some, uh, some, interesting, uh, some interesting breakage of the, of the elbow or of the, of the shoulders. So maybe we want to, uh, maybe you want to keep some strength in the body. Maybe 0.01 is too low. Maybe a value of 0.3. Oh, it's looking better. Okay, yeah, something like that. Uh, not bad. It was now it's falling down. To, uh, let's, uh, let's give it some. Let's give him some more frames to play with. There we go. So now he's uh, being hit by a bullet, and he's uh, presumably standing on some uh, some platform of sorts. Uh, and that's actually looking. That's actually looking pretty good. Let's uh, record this onto a layer. Then we can get rid of our solver. Our solver, and then we have our animation completely uh, completely baked. Pwah. Would be a, you know, this would be a pretty challenging thing to animate by hand. <laughs> and uh, you can now tune the field, you can tune the, the properties of the character uh, and reanimate the character, maybe change the initial pose and get an entirely different result. And you can keep stacking up layers uh, with versions of your simulation uh, and keep playing around until you're happy with it.